Hello, sports fan. This is Stephen Hill for Sports Choice Plus, and I'm bringing you a very special breakdown. I'm going to go ahead and give you guys my AFC playoff prediction picks with seedings included. Before I get right into that, make sure you go ahead and subscribe to the YouTube channel. Once you subscribe, you can get all the weekly updates each and every time we post our content. So without further ado, we're going to hop right into the AFC action, but make sure you subscribe, all right? All right, coming into the AFC 21 season, you're looking at um, I've gone through everybody's schedule in the AFC. This is every single team. I've gone through their odds. Um, I've even looked at, you know, some of the simulations that they've had, some of the players that they have on their roster, the ones that did not opt out. And I'm just looking overall, and here's my playoff picks, okay? So, and I'm going to tell you each and every team why I think they're going to make it and just what kind of impact that they have. Uh, we're going to start with the three wild card teams. I think the first wild card team, I'm going to go with the Cleveland Browns. Um, with the Cleveland Browns, you know that they have a history of not being able to finish strong. They have a history of not really uh, rising to the occasion when they have all of the expectations on them. I think it's a little different this year because we know what the Baltimore Ravens are. The Pittsburgh Steelers are always going to be that wild card, but I just believe Big Ben's not going to get the job done for the Steelers, which leaves the door open for a wild card spot. Um, when you're looking at the Miami Dolphins, you're looking at a team that's on the rise. I don't know if Tannehill's going to be able to work his, uh, not a Tannehill, excuse me, uh, uh, Tua. I don't know if Tua's going to be able to get into the starting spot and work any kind of magic with the Miami Dolphins. But when you're looking overall at the bigger picture for the Cleveland Browns, what do they really have to worry about? I don't think they're going to beat the Ravens twice. I think they can steal a game or two from the Pittsburgh Steelers. I think they can beat the Bengals twice. Now, looking at their schedule after that being a, a, basically a Swiss Army knife, they can make certain things happen with Juice and Odell Beckham Jr. I think they're going to get on the same page with Mayfield and Chubb, and they're going to finally get this offense. You look at Austin Hooper coming up there. They're going to have a potent offense, if you will, and I think that it's going to explode on a couple of teams, and they're going to take those uh, teams for granted. And I think they're going to steamroll a couple of teams that they're supposed to lose to. And I think the Cleveland Browns are going to do that. And when you look at the Miami Dolphins, I don't see them on the rise just yet. I think they need another year to really get the consistent base down so they can get a couple of the uh, players. Um, so that's why I think that they take that spot that Miami was going to vie for. Next up, I have the Tennessee Titans. Ryan Tannehill did some special things last year. You know, Henry did some things amazing last year. That defense did a lot of different things. But I think they take a small step back. Um, with them being in the driver's seat for so many games last year in the playoffs, they let their foot off the gas pedal of the defending Super Bowl champ to Chiefs, and it cost them dearly. I think that this defense lost a couple of pieces. Um, you look at Casey leaving, I think that's going to be a big loss for them. That's why I think that, you know, it's hard to find run stuffers who can do a little of pass rush, who can do a little bit of uh, interior alignment work as far as defensive uh, run stop and also pass stop. So it's, it's, it's just one of those things that I think the Titans are, they have a pretty good mix of their core. They have a good Vrabel head coach. Um, but I think overall, you know, they'll steal a playoff spot and it'll be a wild card spot. But at 10 and 6, I like them there. Um, once again, the Browns at 9 and 7 and then the New England Patriots. I think the Patriots have a soft enough schedule where Cam can get in a starting spot, steal a couple of games from a couple of teams. Uh, you know, they can beat the Jets twice. They can possibly steal one from the Buffalo Bills. And I think they can beat Miami once or twice, depending on who's the quarterback, if you have uh, Tua as your quarterback. You never know what's going on down there. Um, but I think Brian Flores, the head coach of the Dolphins, is going to give you a hard game either way it goes. I think they can still pull that out. Um, now we get into the meat of the schedule, the teams that are going to win their division. And I'm going to go team by team to show you we already got the three wild card spots. I'm going to tell you who's going to win the division. Starting out at the lowest seed, I think 10 and 6, we have the AFC South with the Colts winning that division. I think that with them having Phillip Rivers there, it's going to give them a lot of stability at the quarterback position. I think they'll be able to spin the ball a little bit. T.Y. Hilton eventually is going to uh, surface himself as a pretty good wide receiver and have quality quarterback since Andrew Luck left. Um, you're looking at the offensive line. That offensive line is massive. They can get some stuff done behind that offensive line. Hopefully they can run the ball a little bit. 
get some defensive support for the Colts offense and truly put the nail in the coffin in the NFC South and try to make some waves towards the playoffs. But I think they'll go 10 and 6. Um, when I'm looking at the Buffalo Bills, I have them going 11 and 5. I think that if Josh takes, Josh Allen takes that step forward and he moves forward with Stefan Diggs in a positive direction, this is going to ignite that Buffalo Bills defense. Bills Mafia, I think this is you guys' year. If the Bills make the playoffs at 11 and 5, I think that McDermott is going to pull off those kitty gloves and those kitty training wheels, and he's going to throw hell at whoever is on offense against his defense in the playoffs. When I look at the scheme schematically, when you have Ed Oliver who can play a little bit of defensive tackle, he can play defensive end, his footwork's good, hand work's good. I'm liking what I'm seeing from the pieces. A lot of people will not say this is a good pickup, but Josh Norman, when you have him as your second corner, a lot of things can get done in that uh, Buffalo secondary because you just have the veteran leadership. I'm looking at the linebacker play. That's going to be exceptional. The cornerback play is going to be pretty good. And I think they'll get after the quarterback quite enough to be able to get through to the playoffs and make some noise past the first round. I have them at 11 and 5. Uh, my next team up is the Kansas City Chiefs winning the West. Um, pretty much they're going to go 12 and four. I think that they're going to lose a couple of games and I think one or two is going to be a true loss. And then you're going to have them sit a couple of guys when they get that playoff seating and they secure that number two spot. Um, but the Kansas city chiefs, when you have Patrick Mahomes, it's hard to bet against that. When you have the likes of Travis Kelsey, when you have the likes of Hill at the wide receivers position, if they can keep uh, Sammy Watkins healthy, and you look at the Honey Badger on defense, Frank Clark on defense, and those guys and how they fly around the ball, uh, Chris just got paid. You look at so many different people on that Kansas City Chiefs team that it's time. You know, they have the offense. They have Andy Reid. They're dialing up plays. It's so many things that's going well for the Chiefs. I think they possibly could repeat. And getting 12-4 and four in their regular season, I think that's a great way to go about it. And I think that I like them at 12-4. and four. I don't see too many people beating them straight out in a shootout. I think Mahomes is going to have to protect himself a little bit because you got to think, he's the $500 million man, and they're going to have big expectations. So they're going to have a couple of showdowns, especially with opening the season. But I think that overall, when I'm looking just at the bigger picture, Kansas City is in a pretty good position. When you look at Oakland, Oakland, I don't think that they're going to challenge them. Uh, the Los Angeles Chargers, I think, don't think they're going to charge, uh, challenge them. And I don't believe in the Broncos yet. So I think that this is going to be an easier season for them. They could very well sweep their division and get the full bragging rights to their division. And no one beat them in their own division. So I think they're going to pad a lot of stats with that. And last but not least, you have the MVP of the league last year. I think Baltimore is going to cruise to 14-2. and two. Um, I think what they're going to do is they're going to beat a lot of teams and potentially go 16 to 0, but they're going to pull, Harbaugh's going to pull the gas off that pedal and not play the last two games with Lamar Jackson as little as possible and get them prepared for the playoffs. I think they're going to win the AFC North. The AFC North is just a, a, a jagged place where they beat each other over the head. You look at the Steelers play each other tough with the Ravens. The Bengals even give them tough uh, games. So it's just. The Browns are going to have a couple of tough games against their division rivals. So it's so many different things. But to recap, I got the Ravens winning the division for the North going 14-2. and two. The Chiefs winning the division at 12-4. and four. Bills at 11-5. and five. I have Colts 10-6. and six. Um, We're going with the AFC um, wildcard spots. You got the Titans at 10-6. and six. Patriots at 10-6. and six. And the Browns at 9-7. and seven. So these are my AFC playoff picks and what do I think they expect to make the playoffs. Leave your comments in the comment section below. Let me know what you think about my playoff picks. Also, leave you guys as records of the teams you think that are going to be below. Don't forget, let's debate about that too because um, I'm confident in a lot of my AFC picks. I think this is going to be just the way it goes with everything going on with a pandemic and things like that. We just want to see some good football. So don't forget to subscribe, share, and we'll be debating with you in the comment section. Thank you so very much. Stay safe out there, folks.